your excellencies distinguished guests fellow speakers dear friends ladies and gentlemen it's my pleasure and privilege to be integral part of this very important session sustainable development in qatar the world has changed the world is changing on account of this covid pandemic crisis human tragic has been exhibited in multiple form and substance extraordinary transformation in terms of personal lifestyle and professional makeup we are all recognizing the importance of humanity that's an oriental say if you aim at short term you cultivate flowers if you aim at medium term you cultivate trees if you aim at long term you build humanity eternity and that's what the focus now we live in interconnected interdependent world more than ever we recognize the importance of making sure human prosperity comes into place not only we have to create a better world better citizenship to the world is the need of the hour the world is in transition extraordinary transformation we lost nearly 450000 human beings we have still 8.2 million people are infected every country in the world is going through this pandemic it has defied territorial integrity caste creed race borders in every substance we truly reflecting a new world order financial crisis in 2009 was a result of liquidity liquidity crisis moved into a funding crisis funding moved into a solvency and sovereign issue after 1930 depression financial crisis was jolting the world that was confined to only financial sector developed world advanced economies developing world emerging markets were all truly reflecting the character of solvency and liquidity in the financial sector the hot money was printed and it transcended borders liquidity crisis was put to rest essentially by a process called quantitative easing g7 has become g8 g8 become g20 let's understand the financial crisis was emanating from advanced economies emerging markets were scoring high today nobody is spared last october in the international monetary fund we had a pronouncement of 3.6% global growth in january it was revised by international monetary fund in davos to 3% downward risk was more essentially we have recognized we have to understand the trade or investment banking conflicts globally we have to reconcile to the fact the world is going to go not more than 3% in april when international monetary fund announced the growth as negative after the pronouncement of pandemic to 3.8% that's a contraction advanced economies were grossly underperforming to the tune of 6.1% that's the forecast when it comes to developing economies again a contraction of 1.1% sir it is a great recession as they call it it was in april subsequently when it comes to analytical risk the downward risk were enlarging and world at large as recognized world bank came with another report of 6.2% yesterday oecd has said it is going to be 7.6% contraction in the midst we are in transition the human development economic development environment development social development are all getting reorganized in a new transformational leadership a transformation in every form and substance that's the need of the hub how do we make sure we eliminate extreme poverty how do we ensure food security how do we ensure we have education for all 
How do we make sure zero hunger comes in? How do we ensure hygiene is taken care, health care for all? How do we make sure we create sustainable economies? In today's context, Qatar is going through this transition as well. We all know Qatar is a country of great substance and substantive compliance. We also know the political, social, and economic progression has been a telling story for the world to recognize this wise governance. We have gone through an extraordinary set of changes and challenges. In 2008 and 9, public-private partnership in terms of financial sector was pronounced. We managed to ensure financial stability was rightly recognized. When we had the blockade in 2017 June, we have realized self-reliance's ultimate plan A to plan B was moved in. And today's context, again, yet another wise governance made sure our healthcare systems is second to none. At this point, we have to thank the paramedics, doctors, nurses, who are all engaged in making sure human life is more important and they have given the same kind of commitment Qatar scorecard in terms of healthcare is an exhibition for us to see through. Three, over 300,000 cases have been tested. 82,000 was tested positive. 60,000 was recovered. 22,000 still under observation. The mortality date is just 80. That says it all. Qatar's infrastructure support in terms of healthcare has been very well showcased. And we also have to recognize the economic governance in terms of enforcing liquidity, ensuring financial stability, ensuring social distancing and hygiene are all converging to make sure we make sure we this, this transition is recognized and we administer it to larger advantage of humanity. That's the country of great eminence, and that's what precisely we are going through. In this context, it's important. I showcase some of the clips. I have got very enlightened audience, and again, allied panel, to showcase multiple sectoral exhibitions, and how Qatar government, Qatar government directives, and the Qatar Central Bank initiatives has been reflecting in ensuring liquidity and making sure debt servicing is managed, fiscal and monetary prudence comes in to see we have the crisis converted into a transitory phase. We make sure our financial stability in long term comes to top. Let me showcase some of the videos which is worth exhibiting to start with in global terms. Then I will show a few clips in the next seven minutes. Let me pause it down. I think it's important that we recognize the global economies, which I mentioned. In January, the World Bank forecast 2.5% growth for the global economy in 2020. Then, the COVID-19 pandemic swept the world. On Monday, the World Bank released its revised outlook for 2020 forecasting the global economy to shrink 5.2%. According to the World Bank, the current crisis is the deepest global recession since World War II and almost three times as bad as the 2009 global recession. Also, more advanced economies are projected to shrink by 7% due to widespread of social distancing measures, a sharp tightening of financial conditions, and a huge decline in exports. This includes China, where the COVID-19 outbreak originated. It's projected to see a 1% growth this year, the lowest growth it has registered in more than four decades. However, the World Bank's forecast was made under the assumption that the pandemic recedes by mid-year and negative global spillovers ease during the second half of the year. So that was World Bank. Now let's look at OECD.
So clearly. the biggest mass change in substance we recognize the biggest discovery of this century is to recognize human beings can alter their attitude and alter their lives that's what precisely we are going through in the last three months now the fiscal and monetary measures have been taken trillions of dollars have been pumped in let's start with the united states and brazil The U.S. Federal Reserve has kept interest rates unchanged at 0 to 0.25 percent and said it would keep interest rates near zero through 2022. It also projected the U.S. economy would shrink by 6.5 percent this year, but bounced back with a 5 percent gain in 2021. We're not thinking about raising rates. We're not even thinking about thinking about raising rates. So what we're thinking about is, is providing uh, support for this economy. We do think this is going to take some time. That's a big message. There's no change in the interest rate policy. The monetary policy, interest rate, inflation, liquidity are all now stand still. How do we evolve momentum in terms of growth? That's the question. How do we ensure we put back the jobs in place? We ensure we create more financial stability. This is what ex exactly every country, every continent is engaged in. Similar response has been showcased in ECB as well. is there in terms of the financial markets. The financial markets are highly volatile. Financial markets have become gambling grounds. Stocks, currencies, commodities, properties are all under fluctuations. Value, of, value is uncertain. The diminution is certain. And that's what we are seeing in terms of the great recession. It's a contraction in terms of the economy, diminution in the world in total substance. It means world is deliberating. We have to change with the overall change. And that's what the reflection. Look at oil price. It knows that even to contraction, but it has come back. In today's context, the oil price is showing some semblance of stability. The Brent is quoting at $40. When it comes to US crude, it is $37. Our budgets are differentiated. We have a possibility of current account as well as fiscal deficit because the economy is going through contraction. 
we need to make sure we rationalize then and there. This is the moment in the oil price. When it comes to Brent and WTA, the regional scene scenarios, when it comes to hydrocarbon, 45 percent of world oil, 20, 25 percent of world gas comes from this region. We have to necessarily recognize our financial stability is second to none. Qatar as a country, our external reserves, our internal reserves, this is the GDP is solid. We have twice of the GDP in spite of the contraction which we foresee for a percent in terms of economic momentum. We have to recognize we have reserves, both in terms of sovereigns as well as central bank liquidity and, and stability. We have twice of the GDP as reserves. We can't pay the import bills under any circumstances. And we, have, we are a commodity driven economy. Our long term supply chain will give a sustainable economic momentum. Clearly, the negative growth is clear in non-oil GDP as well as the GDP in, in total terms. Hydrocarbon has been a source of support for the region and Qatar in specific terms. We have taken right initiatives. Qatar borrowed money in the international market in 1998 and then transformed the resources to their advantage so that the economic stability is visible today. A single decision to recognize LNG is going to be the futuristic, energy efficient, environment friendly commodity has been a resounding vision. And that has transformed everything. That has made our financial stability solid. In today's context, world over, energy mix is changing and LNG is here to stay. Meanwhile, the central bank, Qatar central bank has taken enormous measures. Let me showcase some of the important measures in terms of social distancing, transaction-based processing to digital advantage and ensuring liquidity comes in, national guarantee programs comes in to ensure small and medium-sized entrepreneurs or affected sectors are fully supported. And that's the kind of alignment between monetary policy and fiscal policy is very much there. Let's watch it. Qatar central bank reforms are quite meaningful and my colleagues across they will going to they're going to explain to you what is this all about in terms of financial markets we also have to see the hydrocarbon some of the decisions which we have taken to scale it up from 77 million metric ton to 110 million metric ton by 2025 is definitely there and again after 110 once we accomplish by 2027, we'll have 127 million metric ton. Here is the addiction. The credit creation is happening and hydrocarbon market is growing.
support the transmission. Qatar Petroleum has signed shipbuilding agreements with South Korea's big three shipyards to buy more than 100 ships in a deal worth more than 19 billion U.S. dollars. It's the largest LNG ship contract in history. Industry says sources say that three South Korean companies, Taeyu Shipbuilding and Marine Engineering, Hyundai Heavy Industries and Samsung Heavy Industries will construct around 40 ships each by 2027. This is what the finance. But as I mentioned the regarding the North Field, we are full steam ahead. We are, as uh, we have mentioned in the past, uh, we're going to be uh, awarding all our contracts for North Field expansion project. We have two phases, uh, the east and the south uh, expansion. We're going to go from 77 million tons uh, per annum to 110 million tons per annum by 2025, and then uh, up from 110 to, to 126 by the year 2027. Uh, and uh, we've ordered all uh, the shipping requirements and we've booked slots for about $20 billion. Uh, dollars, uh, we've announced just a couple of weeks ago. And um, that's at the cost of uh, around uh, 20 billion US dollars. And we've booked up 60% of the entire world's capacity of building LNG ships. So these we call them our moving pipelines, if you will, but that's uh, to have our uh, full supply chain uh, up and ready by the time we have all the developments uh, in place. Qatar is built in public private partnership model. That was pronounced by his highness Emir. And also Qatar went into international market, borrowed 10 billion. Originally we were seeking for 5 billion because oversubscribed nearly five times. Now, recognition of the fact, we got it a five year note debt paper for US treasury plus 300 basis points, 10 year note for US treasury for 305 basis point and a 30-year long-term, we could procure for 4.4%. That's clearly a testament for us to realize Qatar's financial stability is known to global investors. That story goes on. So this is what I call it as sustainability in real orders. Our concern is today is to make sure we sustain our meritocracy. With me to enlighten, there are distinguished panels who are going to showcase their perspective in this challenging and changing dynamics.